How's it going, everybody? I just upgraded to Sound ID Reference 5, which is with Sonarworks. In this video, I just want to show you how I'm going to download it and get it set up. I also just got new monitors, which you can see behind me here, the Neumann KH310s, which I'm super excited about. They sound amazing, but I'm going to finalize my monitor setup by doing the whole Sonarworks routine. So let's jump in and I'll let you know how this all turns out. I did want to say too that I have a free resource for you. Uh, that is my complete acoustic guide that you can download at soundproofyourstudio.com slash acoustic. I will also have a link in the description below that is an affiliate link for Sonarworks if you are interested in checking out the software. I do really like it myself and I think it's the cherry on top for getting a great sound in your studio. <laughs> So this is going through the eight camera audio, which I apologize for the crappy audio, but I'm mainly doing this because we're gonna use a reference microphone, which you can sort of see right here in the box. And this is gonna be able to pick up the speakers. So I have to make it all clean with my audio interface. Um, so just want to get that out of the way, but I'm going to, I just downloaded from the Sonarworks website, the free trial, or in this case, I have a activation code that I'm gonna put in for the serial number. So I'm gonna hit accept on this. Um, I'm gonna select the, for speakers and headphones. If you're just doing the headphones version, you can click that. So we're gonna go install the all new sound ID reference. Cool, so now I've actually never seen this, but it'll take you to, I guess, a whole page here on setup guides. Um, we're gonna go through and launch sound ID reference down here. So I'm gonna log into my account here. If you don't have this, you can go ahead and sign up for one on the main web page. All right, so you're just gonna enter your email here that you have registered with Sonarworks. I'm gonna click on activate license below here. So pull me up to the activation key. All right, so I just had to make sure that I, on the website, clicked and activated that. We're gonna let them access our microphone. Click to add a new output. So we're gonna do the Universal Audio Thunderbolt, which is my interface. So whatever your interface is that you're using to listen through your speakers, you wanna click, click on that. We're gonna play a test tone here. Left, right. Make sure my speakers are left and right, which they are. So now we are going to open measure, which is going to then measure the speakers. And we'll go through this whole process here. So we've got two speakers left and right, and we're gonna to go to next. So we wanna make sure that the phantom power is powering the measurement microphone. So I'm gonna to go to console, which is specific to universal audio. And we'll find that, I'm gonna turn that on. I'm gonna turn off any sort of anything in this line that could affect the signal at all. We want it to be as clean and pure as possible. Don't run this through um, a third party preamp or anything like that. It should go straight into your interface, nothing fancy. And so I'm gonna pull out my reference mic right here. And then, now we know, see that that's good. We're gonna click phantom power is on your input and output is routed to the same device or they use the same clock source. So again, what that really means is that everything's going in and out of here. I have this muted so I'm not getting feedback. Um, and so that is good. Microphone signal cannot be heard through the speakers. Again, like I said, it was muted. They say this will take about 20 minutes. Um, we'll see how long it takes here. Microphone channel is going to be universal audio Thunderbolt line one, but that depends on your speaker. So we're just gonna tap this, we'll access the microphone. They got some uh, input to signal detected. Hit next. We're gonna type in the actual reference number. So if I look on my um, Sonarworks, it has a specific serial number specific to this microphone. If you do not have the Sonarworks reference microphone, you can definitely purchase it on the website. So I'm gonna do that real quick. All right, you can also use a different measurement microphone if you want, but they recommend using this so it's all in-house, which I think is a good idea. All right, so it shows the curve of my actual mic, which is fairly flat except for a little bit of a peak here 
in the high 10 kilohertz range. So then we're going to go through. Uh, sound the output channel. We have left and right monitors, so I'm just going to test the left. Left speaker. Right speaker. They are sounding good. All right, so we're going to find the sweet spot. Please adjust the volume of your output device. My voice should sound at normal conversation volume. I'm going to raise it up just a little bit. Left speaker. Just because I know. Right speaker. Please adjust the volume of your output device. My voice should sound at normal conversation volume. Sounds pretty good to me. All right, my volume is set. So to do this, clear out anything you could bump into while within your listening area. So I'm going to move my chair like they're showing in this diagram in your hand or use a stand if that is more convenient. I prefer to hold it in my hand because I've done this so many times and it's kind of easier. You just kind of hold it away from you so it doesn't affect. Keep the microphone in the center of your listening spot, adjust the mic level to your ears while seated, and point the microphone between your speakers. So um, we're going to go through all that. Alrighty, so I've got my space clear and we're going to hit next. Alright, hold the measurement next. They show this thing. You want it to be where your ears are seated and the point the end microphone between your speakers. So we're going to position it in the listening spot. They got a little countdown. So I know roughly I've even got a piece of tape on the floor here with my like perfect listening spot. Just so you know, uh, basically 38% of your room is ideal, um, but you can always adjust it later. I've already adjusted my speakers some to get what I found the best possible quality with the new monitors. And now I'm just going to get the EQ just right using sonar work. So there is some work you want to do ahead of time, which will be another YouTube video. All right, let's start doing this. So we have to increase the microphone gain. I'm gonna hold this out for me. All right, gain adjustment done. We'll do this next. We'll just keep going through this. So I'm using the Imperial system. You can use metric if you want. So we want to go to the side of our speakers and we're going to hold the microphone 0.4 to 8 inches away from the speaker's mid-range driver. So notice my speakers here, I just pulled this up. My speakers are actually new three-way ones. They're actually these exact ones here, these Neumanns. So I want to make sure I use the mid-range driver, not the woofer, the bass driver or the tweeter. So I'm going to point it at this guy right here. All right and 0.4 to 0.8 inches away from the speaker's mid-range driver. Um, so very close. I'm gonna give myself just a little more time and we're gonna measure from the left speaker. Awesome. Now we're gonna do the same thing most likely for the right speaker. I'm gonna start measuring here. All right, after doing a lot of different measurement stuff, I finally got these to the six foot, eight inch uh, triangular pattern that I wanted. So now. Alright, sweet. So you saw all of that. It was kind of crazy. I probably fast forwarded through most of that, but pretty similar to what I did before in reference four. This is slightly, you know, sleeker, I think, in reference ID five, but I uh, can't see too much of a difference between that. So my room response is about what I expected here. So I'm going to save and finish and just make sure that uh, I definitely label this so that I know exactly what it is. So I'm going to call this, let's see, Neumann 22, because I may move these again and I'll just know exactly what I did here. So I'll save that and then close. Oops. So let's go to open existing profile. We'll open the Neumann KH310 October 1. All right, great. So now 
we have a flat target, Dolby Atmos. Um, so we want to make sure this is enabled. This is going to be the overall test, like going through my entire computer's sound system. So we've got this. I can turn it on and off. So you can have a dry wet knob. Um, we can show simulated after the before, which is kind of interesting to see. Um, and so this is basically what's happening afterwards with it. So it's creating this much flatter response. The before we can see here. So I have this dip in my room that's pretty much been there always. And then this is pretty standard for this room too. Really nice flat response here. You can see around 100 hertz. There's a big problem there in the base. I'm going to enable that again. And then again with the simulated after, you can see it's flattening everything up. So I like to use this because even with these new amazing speakers in this amazing room, it's never perfect. Um, you know, we're off here by like less than plus or minus 6 dB is usually acceptable for recording studios. Um, right here it's a little high and then that's definitely a bit low, too high over 6 dB in the low base there. So we'll hopefully get that kind of figured out there. And yeah, you can also add this to uh, in your DAW so we can open up Logic. So in Logic here, if you go all the way to the right, you can see that they've got a little plug in here um, this is the reference for, let me see if I've got Sonarworks, um, Sound ID reference plugin. So this is the new one I used to have reference for. Um, it's going to open it up and I'll say yes, help, help set it up. Make sure it's the last plugin in your chain on your master bus. And when rendering, you want to make sure to bypass it. Otherwise you'll have the EQ set to your output track when you bounced it, which you obviously don't want. So we can open a profile, same, it looks pretty much exactly the same as it did. I'm gonna pick that Neumann one over here that I made. I have a bunch of other ones from reference four. So I'm gonna open that and we got it. We have it enabled and that's calibration enabled or not. Um, you can turn the whole plugin on or off here as well. So same sort of thing. We can also add, uh, we can add a new preset and then I guess you would go up here and we can go and add headphones. So this is really useful as well when you're mixing and you can do this for either one. We're going to search, I use the sign, I'm going to search for Sennheiser and they'll have all the different Sennheiser headphone products. I use the 280 Pro. So it's hard to tell, but I think if you have any version within the last couple of years, it's going to be the HD 280 Pro new facelift. Um, it's going to be wired. It's kind of cool how they have that picture now. So you can see the way it is and then you can also look and see the simulated after and it'll show you exactly what it's doing to the calibration here's the before and you can see that it had all these things and it's changing them up a bit so now that i've got these two new things i'm good to go with my own mixing for what i do and getting a flat response again i can turn that on or off and i will be good to go and when you're ready to bounce just make sure to turn the entire plugin off Alternatively, with mixing, I've been using the overall sound ID reference and not using the plugin. The main thing I find is with the plugin, uh, sometimes if you're using, sorry, if you're using recording, you want to use the plugin because there's low latency there. Um, and if you're using sound ID reference, you can have some trouble with latency problems when listening back and recording. All right, I wanted to go over a couple more things. I've had some more time to play around with this new sound ID reference, which is a big difference between reference four if you've been using that. So what I really wanted to talk about is some of these cool things down here with a select your target mode. Flat is what I've it's been known for. It'll make like your speakers really flat. The Dolby Atmos will change it so that you'll have more of a Dolby Atmos system uh, target. Uh, you can create a custom target. Um, if you wanted to adjust the bass or the high end and the translation check is something that looks really interesting to me. This is something I could possibly see myself using when I'm finishing up a mix and want to just double check some things on there. You can go anywhere from, this is probably the coolest thing they've added in. You could do these different car settings. Uh, to my ears, they do sound pretty bad. Um, they have the AirPods, in-ear average, momentum. Um, sound sport. These are just different popular headphone designs, some different laptop designs, and basically you can hear what your stuff sounds like. Uh, some different tilt curves, the 
BNK speakers, which were a really popular high-end speaker back in the 70s. You've got some over-ear headphone, different ones to listen to, smartphone average, which is great to see what that sounds like. Studio speakers. Uh, this is actually one of the more interesting ones. Uh, whoops. Is you can choose between the mix cubes, and I don't know why it says NS11. NS10s are the most popular, some of the most popular monitors of all time because they sounded really bad. And if you mix sounded good on them, then it would translate well. So this will give you a really solid mid rangey mix. And I could see myself using this to to mix and listen to the mid range even on my mains without having mix cubes or NS10s. So. I don't know how accurate it is, but it's pretty cool nonetheless to get some different versions of your mix really easily within Sonarworks. So these are also TVs down here. You can list some different averages with TVs. Uh, I will warn you, I've done this already and it sounds terrible. So if you are <laughs> if you go and listen through these speakers and then go back to your mains uh, without the EQ curve of the translation check, it can be pretty night and day and trick your ears into thinking your speakers sound really flat or super bassy. Now I want to go and talk about one other thing that I think is important. This is the phase mode. So in zero latency mode, if you're doing any recording, this can be good. Like I said before in this video, I recommend using the plugin when you're doing recording and listening back and trying to get an accurate feel of what your recordings sound like. However, when you're mixing, I would use this external plugin that's on your desktop here and open this and don't use the plugin in your digital audio workstation and then i would set this to linear phase so that you don't have any phase distortion um, but you're going to have some higher latency and pre-ringing artifacts but this will give you um, probably the best quality sound you could try mixed and see if there's a good uh, compromise between the minimal phase and pre-ringing and zero um, would have some of that phasing issue, which, you know, when you're mixing, you've already done all this work to get a really accurate sound. So I would shoot for that linear phase. Um, I like to keep my listening spot enabled. This is just a slight delay they'll uh, initiate in like 0 0.02 milliseconds. So minimal, so, so small. But I do find that in, in some ways, um, this little adjustment for my listening spot does sound better than without it on. So I just turn it on. And um, the limit controls, I don't use this at all, so I'm just going to probably keep this at neutral. Um, but you could mess around with this. This would uh, set the frequency range affected by calibration using limit controls. Um, so that can be helpful. This guy, uh, the safe headroom here, um, sometimes I'll have it enabled, but a lot of times when I'm mixing, I actually will disable it um, because I want to make sure that I'm not mixing too loud into my speakers and then distorting them once I turn that off. So I'm always trying to keep a good headroom when I'm mixing anyways. But if you're listening to recordings when you're producing, I do find it's helpful if you're pushing the levels and don't realize you're getting some distortion added in. So this safe headroom will always make sure that you have no distortion coming out of the plugin itself. So that seems to be a lot of the new stuff. I'm sure there's some things I might be missing, um, but for the most part, this is pretty great um, in general as an upgrade from the Sonarworks Reference 4. So if you're thinking about upgrading, this is definitely something I would look into doing. I think it's pretty cool, especially with the translation check stuff they have here. All right, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Again, like I said, there is a link that is an affiliate link for Sonarworks in the description below if you're interested in buying and checking out Sound ID Reference. And then also, if you are in need of learning about how to acoustically treat your room, which again, this is crucial that you acoustically treat your room before using Sonarworks, because you're gonna get even better results that way. Sonarworks only takes you so far. So definitely check out my free acoustic treatment guide at soundproofyourstudio.com com slash acoustic that's soundproofyourstudio.com slash acoustic and i will see you all next week